Hi, I'm Jeremiah Prophet. And I'm Shandra Prophet. And I'm Alice Prophet. Welcome to another episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. <laughs> Let's go see what Jordy's doing. Oh, watch it, don't crash my connector. Oh, look at that. We, what, what do you got going on? We are, uh, we're installing the rear view camera. And this is kind of a process on a 60 series. To do this right, the guy needs to modify the bottom of his tag assembly and put his wire directly inside of the tailgate. And then, I'm gonna open this tailgate. You need to bring it in through the body and into the main wire harness up behind the spare tire and off into your fender. Also, all going through the proper body grommets. All, all, all just so we can see out the back with the, the camera. A lot, lot of work just to look behind you, um, but it's the only right way to in, do it. In the olden days, they had these things, reflective glass. I'm not sure what those are called. <laughs> um, I heard about those. Yeah. Mirrors. Yeah. That's it. You yeah. got it. Rear view mirrors. Yeah. yeah. What happened here? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was helping the kid move some wood. Oh, <laughs> oh there's nothing, <laughs> nothing harder on you than I, firewood. Oh, am I bleeding? Yeah, I am bleeding. Oh, no. All right. Well, carry on. This is a cool truck. I'm excited to see this one done. His, this will be his like, response was not enough where it's going to run in your eye. Just keep going. <laughs> so that's what he said to me. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be, that should be your safety tip. Little tech tip that we came up with the other day, came up with the other day. Um, we, we've been struggling with working inside these cars with all the bumps and nooks and crannies and they're so darn hard to kneel in and work in. And we had this idea, hey, what about a beanbag chair? How well would that work? Well, boom, it's just a fantastic way and you can put it anywhere in the interior and the bottom just kind of absorbs the floor pan and you're comfortable and you can move it all about and do your work. You, you, Tech tip of the month. Yeah. And <laughs> Don't tell anybody this, but we, sometimes we even drive these to the exhaust shop with the beanbag chair. <laughs> oh, we've, we've never done that. We call it, we call it bean, bean bagging it to the exhaust shop. It actually works really good. It's great. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Are you distracting Casey? I am. Don't come. worry, I'm just goose scraping. So. He's scraping, I'm trying it's to find a real, my truck to show It's not him. a real technical job, it's just, Time-consuming. <laughs> what, uh, what are you, what's going on over here? <laughs> we are removing the goo. I guess it was probably for paint protection or anti-corrosion in the engine bay, but they went a little hog wild with it. And we can't paint over it, so we have to remove it all. So when you said in this morning's meeting that you were going to be huffing lacquer fumes, lacquer thinner fumes all day, this is what you meant? That's exactly what I meant. <laughs> so I'll be feeling real good by the end of the day. <laughs> But this is, we're going to repaint this engine bay, stage two with an engine compartment refinish. So it's important. Thanks, Casey. Have you guys met Casey? I was on a, I was on a film about two and a half years ago. Yeah, that's right. No, so, no, four years ago. So no. you're late for work. <laughs> I, I hired Casey to work here four years ago and he just showed up. I just finally showed up. <laughs> Uh, it took a long time to get out of California, but Casey's here. That's a long walk. Yeah, he's here now. It was now. a long walk. It was a long, strenuous walk. <laughs> and, and Casey's a super, he's a Land Cruiser enthusiast, big time. Uh, we just got back from cruising the lab. He's a wheeling enthusiast. Um, and uh, like super highly skilled, valued employee. Um, so we're going to make sure we take really good care of him and keep him around for a long time. And I think he might be good on camera. Will he be good on camera? I'll be as best as I can be, I guess. <laughs> All right, so look forward to seeing more of that. And speaking of uh, people who went to cruise Moab. <laughs> Hello. James uh, is a, a part-time employee, but only on his own car. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is we, we got so carried away on his car that he just decided to come down here and help finish it up, right? Pretty but, much, uh, yeah. uh, anyway, this was your first cruise Moab experience. So, well, First time First wheeling. Wheeling, yeah. I did Hell's Revenge and Hell's Gate. And it was horrifying. <laughs> it was horrifying. <laughs> so th this is so his rig right it. here. We got it working. Um, so it's, it's it's a goat, right? The two. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely 
Um, this is a Land Cruiser in almost its purest state. I mean, it does have a different engine and it has a newer Toyota engine, but stock open diffs, uh, you know, no lockers, does have power steering, but just did Hell's Revenge with a Automatic not a, too, that helped a lot. Yeah, yeah, automatic self. Not a novice driver. I mean, James has been off-roading motorcycles and you know, way scarier, more dangerous <laughs> things than this. But first time in a four-wheeled vehicle off-road, yeah. he did super good. They were very capable. I was shocked how capable a stock 40 is. I thought I was going to roll over backwards a couple of times, but it didn't. It just stuck to the rock and kept going. It was wonderful. Hell's Revenge will do that too. It's like yeah, that one, the steepest one I think is called the launch pad. That's the one I stalled on. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, one's not good. That's not good. <laughs> Stop. Anyway, awesome job. I'm ready for Cruise Mob again. Actually, I'm ready for next year. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna get a level zero next time. Okay. <laughs> So James's rig is actually super sweet. It's a 67 uh, FJ40 and it's got most of the original patina. We added our PRLC replica winch bar in the front and we fixed all the rust in the back and uh, we're in the middle of trying to make the patina uh, match or recreate the original patina. Um, this rig also has a pretty unique drivetrain. It's got a 3FE uh, that, uh, out of an FJ62 and also the A440 automatic out of the FJ62. Um, so it's kind of crammed in there to put an automatic and an FJ40 without a wheelbase extension, uh, but it is a sweet rig to drive. Um, you know, shackle reversal, power steering, disc brakes, automatic, a little bit more modern drivetrain, but looking like this, it's actually one of the more popular rigs that we took to Cruise Moab. People will flock to this before they look at some of the other things. So um, very, very cool. This is why people love Toyota Land Cruisers. This is license plate day? Yeah. All right. Hey, look, the, the tags are even current. That, like, never happens on these trucks. Who put this on? Is that a fork wrench out for that license plate? Oh, this, <laughs> this is just wrong. Somebody put the sticker in the wrong place. Hmm. It's got some now it's supposed to there. go down here. There's even instructions on these. Right? Are you not filming this one? Yeah, we're filming right now. You're on camera. You just got on camera asking. No, are you? Like doing your a feature? Yes. Oh, we're gonna do a feature, but we're waiting until we get the doors back. We'll do a full feature on that. He's a yell at us. We put the license plates on. He didn't have time. To yeah, but we're driving it now. So you know what? Here's one of my pet peeves. In fact, maybe this is this episode. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! You know how? When somebody puts something on like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or whatever, they always have their thumb like partially over the screen so that it blurs out the license plate. Why? Why? Why do you have to hide your license plate number? Like I'm going to stalk you based on your Facebook Marketplace ad and track you down with my license plate skills and then come to your house and rob you? You park your car in public spaces all the time. Walmart, the grocery store. If I want your license plate number, I'm getting it, baby. I'll just follow you around and get it. Smudging it out? That doesn't make any sense to me. In the comments below, if you think there's a real reason to block your license plate number or something you're putting up for sale, let me know. But I think it's all just silly. What do you think? Uh, maybe if it was like stolen, you know, like 10 minutes ago, then you might want to like spray paint over the license plate. That's a good point. Selling my yeah. stolen car on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. Now they're always thousand bucks, first come, first serve. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. That's my stop. It just stop smudging your license plate for no reason. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> So this is a factory soft stop FJ40. Um, but I get comments or questions all the time. What, you know, how do I know this is a fa if this is a factory soft top or not? So I want you to tell our uh, audience three things that would indicate that a Land Cruiser, this is, I put him on the spot, right? So, but I guarantee he knows at least three things. What are three things that you can look at on an FJ40 to see if it's a factory soft top or not? Oh boy. So don't they usually have this guy? Yep, they always right. have. A threaded hole right here. FJ40s that weren't factory soft tops had this cutout in the sheet metal, but no threads. Get the camera in there, you can see that's actually a threaded, a 10 millimeter 1.25 threaded hole for the loop for the strap. Next, Bob. The funky hinge is a dead giveaway. Yep, that is a dead giveaway. The door hinges have a half a barrel on top because the factory soft doors were easily, supposed to be easily removed. And Bob, number three. The holes in the top of this, or some of them didn't have those. I don't know what you're talking about. For the snaps, the holes in the top of oh, the Oh, 
Yeah, holes in this room. These are just magnets. Holes right here for snaps, but we've lined over those so you can't tell. Yeah, factory soft tops all had a one-piece fold up tailgate, right? You saw Roy here putting this. Oh, this is gonna change. When you guys see the feature of this rig in like three episodes, this is gonna be fixed, I promise. The one-piece fold down tailgate instead of the bifold door. And they also had provisions right here for, not right here, but this bracket right here was mounted to the floor directly below this. We've moved it to the top of our speaker mount um, because this is the only place to put speakers in an FJ40, but this was bolted to the floor directly below it. And then right here on the face, there was a kind of a horseshoe looking bracket that the tube would go through. So, but I've seen 40s that had that, that weren't factory soft tops for some reason. But the loop on the front, the tailgate, like you pointed out, and the, the door hinge is dead giveaway. What was your, what was your other one? You said? Um, so the strap, so factory soft tops had a, a goofy seat belt strap. That, that went, funky bolt, is that true? Yeah, that, that went from the loop on the dash back to a bolt that was like a, a big head, big round head, kind of like a tailgate chain bolt, and that allowed that, what do you call it, strap, a, safety strap, yeah, to, to loop on. This doesn't have that, but that's because we lined over it because she didn't have a strap. But now I think we're going to order some straps because Spectre sells a replica, and then we'll have to find that hole, put it back in. Good job, Bob. Thank you. This is another stop it, actually. I'm gonna use this for a second stop it. Stop it! Stop it! So this Land Cruiser is here for some cosmetic work, but also to have, somebody else did this engine conversion and they did a pretty good job. Uh, better than most, but the battery was in a horrible place. Any place other than the engine compartment is a horrible place for a battery, unless it's like, extenuating circumstances like a like a super secret SEMA truck or something where there just physically isn't any room. He had batteries under the seat. Uh, so we moved him. And Alex is doing what? Making a battery tray. Where is the another place you've seen recently where somebody put a battery tray or, or a battery where it shouldn't be? In the bed. In the bed. FJ45 pickup we recently got in here has the battery in the bed. I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense to put the battery far away from the things that need power, especially the things like the starter, which need the most power. And, and the big difference, the big problem with that is the routing of a big cable like this through precarious situations, wrapped in thin electrical tape to protect it, you know, that wouldn't do anything. Like, the longer your battery cable, the bigger the check. I could use this as a jump rope. Stand over here, honey, I'm gonna jump rope. Um, the longer the battery cable, the more chances you are gonna rub through it somewhere and, uh, and create potentially a humongous electrical fire or bad problem. So in the bed, under the seats, I don't know. There's almost always room in the engine compartment. Not always, <laughs> but, always. but almost always. Stop it, stop it! Today I'm really excited to show you the stage two HJ60 restoration. It's not very often we get to restore a right hand model like this, and this one turned out sweet. The original color of this Land Cruiser was white, but the customer chose to refinish it in Toyota's cement gray. Under the hood, this HJ60 is all stock, including a 2H diesel and a five-speed transmission. Of course, this engine bay looks a little better than it did stock. We've done a full engine and engine compartment cosmetic restoration. The most unique thing about this Land Cruiser are the factory barn doors. This makes it really easy to get kiddos in and out of the back. You can see in this HJ60, we've actually added a third row seat, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is the second or third time we've done this. There's actually quite a bit of room back here. I mean, I'm not totally uncomfortable. This is a best top fold and tumble seat, so it will fold forward and, and uh, make room for cargo back here. And then in addition to the seat that we've added and covered in the same leather, we've added three-point retractable seat belts for the rear passengers, which is pretty cool too, and would even accommodate some car seats back here. This HJ60 got a really nice interior. We use this distressed leather on all three rows of seating, the door panels, and the tuppy box. We use a 24 to 12 volt reducer to install this doubled-in stereo and dual USB charging port. For the suspension, we installed an Old Man Emu 2.5 inch lift. We completed the look with a set of 33 BF Goodrich all-terrain tires on factory FJ40 wheels.
So I wanted to give a quick shout out to our friend at Colorado FJ40 uh, on Instagram and uh, probably Facebook under the same name. Um, he makes really cool Land Cruiser swag. Um, we got some coasters and the sweet blanket. And uh, so thanks to Colorado FJ40. So that's another episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. If you like us, hit subscribe and watch all the rest of them. Pink to our team. Is that a second stop it? What? Put your battery, don't put your battery anywhere but in the engine compartment. No. No? Is that, well then why are we talking? I don't know. Quality to it. It's a stop it, but Alex, Alex, uh... It's awake, I'm not. Truman's awake, Alex is not. Third row retractable seat belts back here, which means this rig can safely carry seven people. There we go. Now, personal injury, right? We take personal injury very seriously around here. Yeah. yeah. We, we run a safe work environment. We just talked about that this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't do anything. The, the safety tip is whatever Jeremiah is doing, don't, don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> yeah, right? That's it. That's pretty accurate. Yeah.